Y'all, thank you for coming. Holly May, thank you very much for being with us. I'm not very photogenic. <laughs> All right, y'all. Thank you for joining us again. <clears throat> We've been here a number of times, and of course, the hurricane's been with us for some time now. But we're glad to have you here, and we'll, we'll keep you up to date completely. I'd like to call on Chaplain John Denny. Captain? <coughs> Thank you, Governor. Excuse me. I'm Chaplain John Denny, South Carolina <coughs> National Guard. And in 1 Kings 19, the prophet Elijah is on a mountain, and he's looking for God. And while on top of that mountain, he experiences an earthquake, a mighty wind, and a fire. And as he starts to get discouraged, because God's not in that, God reveals himself in a very small voice. And it's in that time Elijah realizes that God's not always in the big things in life. A lot of times he's in the small things we take for granted. If you would, please pray. Almighty God, we want to pause and give you thanks as we're able to see you and experience you in the little things in life. While we may not be able to see you in the wind and the rain of this storm, your presence will be made clear in the small whispers. Whispers like people helping people, friends and strangers alike, Clemson and Carolina fans banding together, other states giving of resources, all out of love for each other. In the worst of situations, you show us your best, and for that, we give you thanks. Continue to watch over and protect us, and we'll be sure to give you all the honor, praise, and glory. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Thanks, Chaplain Denny. <clears throat> oh, excuse me, John Quirello, National Weather Service. Thank you, Governor. Quirello. Good afternoon. So as you know, Hurricane Florence made landfall this morning around 7.15 a.m. near Wrightsville Beach, North Carolina. Uh, the Wilmington Airport measured a gust to 105 miles an hour, which is the second highest ever recorded there. Uh, so far, looking around in South Carolina, the highest winds that we've observed here, wind gusts that we've observed here, is 63 miles an hour uh, just north of Conway, 61 miles an hour at Myrtle Beach International Airport, and 60 miles an hour at Grand Strand Airport. Florence is still a Category 1 hurricane with maximum sustained winds of 75 miles an hour and located 35 miles east-northeast of Myrtle Beach. Florence is a very large storm. If you were to look on radar at the rain shield, you will see that it's approximately the size of the state of South Carolina. One big problem is that Florence is only moving at five miles an hour, which is only a little faster than the average walking speed of a person. This means we're in for long duration impacts, especially across the northeast part of the state. There are many hazards associated with Florence, so I'll break down some of the biggest impacts we're concerned with. One is the wind. Hurricane force winds are possible into this evening across the Grand Strand as the center of Florence slowly shifts westward into the northeast part of the state. Tropical storm force winds will spread into parts of the low country and midlands tonight into Saturday with wind gusts to about 50 miles an hour as it weakens into a tropical storm and eventually crosses into the midlands on Saturday. Winds should then diminish on Sunday as the remnants of Florence lift northwest out of the state. These winds will likely result in downed trees and power outages across many parts of our state. Rainfall and the likelihood of deadly flash flooding is perhaps the biggest concern. Catastrophic rainfall amounts of 15 to 25 inches is expected across parts of the Grand Strand and PD. Rainfall amounts drop off as you head south and west across the state, but in the I-26 corridor extending from Charleston, Columbia, and into the Greenville-Spartanburg area, uh, rainfall amounts could be as high as three to seven inches, which could be enough to produce flash flooding in low-lying and urbanized areas, as well as in the mountains of South Carolina. The heavy rain potential will persist through the weekend. As has previously been mentioned, this will be a multi-phase event, as once the water falls, it will flow into area rivers and is expected to produce major to record-breaking floods 
across portions of the PD and Catawba River basins beginning late this weekend and persisting through next week. So given the threat for flash flooding and eventual river flooding, it's important to be prepared to seek higher ground if you live in a low-lying or flood-prone location. Never drive across water-covered roadways, which is the main cause of freshwater fatalities. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, John Carrello. <clears throat> well, as we've seen, this Hurricane Florence is different from those we've had before. This hurricane is going to be with us for about two days. If you remember, when Hurricane Hugo came along in 1989, and that was a huge hurricane, it came through McClellanville, just uh, north of Charleston, at about midnight. It was in Columbia at about 2 a.m., and then it was in Charlotte by 5, 5 a.m., and people were waking up in Charlotte to see the trees knocked down, big live oaks and others knocked down in Charlotte. So it, it was like a rocket through our state compared to Florence. Florence is here to stay for a while, and as John Quirello pointed out, <clears throat> that means all this rain that you see here, which is about 300 miles across, which as he pointed out is as, as big as, as our state, is going to be with us falling not only on us, but it's also falling, as you can see, in North Carolina right now. And a lot of that rain in North Carolina comes into the rivers that flow across South Carolina, particularly in the PD. <laughs> So the PD is going to see a lot of flooding. We're liable to have flooding all over the state because th this is something that we have not seen before, this much rain, a hurricane staying on top of us for this long. So that means, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have to have patience. We're going to have to be careful for a long time. And then we're going to have to deal with a lot of water after the winds leave. And that brings a whole new set of consequences up in addition to the high rain and the high winds and the surge that we're experiencing now. We will have, as I said, the, the flooding is, in, we're very familiar in the Midlands with the flooding of 2015. For instance, in Columbia along the Gills Creek watershed, everybody knows what happens there. There were, you could barely see the tops of cars on Forest Drive out in near the Forest Acres and towards Fort Jackson. But that rain and that flooding equals danger, and that means we're going to have to have patience. And that also means that there will be times when we will have to really be on the lookout for the looters and those who would try to take advantage of this situation. And I assure you that law enforcement in South Carolina will show no mercy and spare no quarter to those who are seeking to take advantage of this situation. We are not going to have electricity in large parts of the state for maybe days and maybe even weeks because the people cannot get in to fix those things until the rains are gone and the waters are gone. And of course, we know the waters are going to be coming a day or so, that is the flooding, a day or so after the winds are, are gone. So this is going to be a very trying period. This is something that we haven't had before, but I'm sure that it's something that we are equal to. We're liable to have bridges that are impassable, roads that are washed out, flash floods, maybe even landslides in the mountains. Do not drive around the barricades. These are the same warnings and urgings we've been doing throughout. Be careful, be smart. If you have any questions, call, call the authorities. Go to uh, scemd.org and you can get instructions there. Call the numbers that have been given. Call the local, call the sheriff's office, call 911. A lot of those numbers will, will still be operating that have been given before. But don't take things into your own hands and take a chance. The last thing we want to do is lose lives in South Carolina because of impatience and because of not being smart. We've been in constant communication, as you have noticed over the days with these conferences and talking to people around the state, and we're not forgetting any part of the state. I want to point out particularly over in Marion County, you remember Nichols really got hit last time. Well, they're liable to get hit again. And I've been speaking just last night to the mayor, the chairman of county council, the county administrator, current and former house members, the senator, and I've assured them, and they already knew because they've been in constant communication as well, that we're pulling for them, we're praying for them, we're working with them, and we want to keep the damage to the minimum and keep loss of life, loss of property 
to an absolute minimum, and the whole Team South Carolina is backing them, but not only them, but every other part of South Carolina. The populated and densely populated as well as sparsely. And we've been on the phone, those of us here, and talking face to face as well with the coastal mayors, the coastal council members, the sheriffs, emergency officials, and all on the coast in particular, as well as friends and neighbors who are calling with information and insight. And it's, a, <clears throat> it's heartwarming to see the community, the people of South Carolina, working together in the, in the face of this very serious situation, which we have really not seen before. So with that, we'll proceed with uh, some of the members of our team. General Livingston, National Guard. Thank you, Governor. Yes, sir. Uh, all of Team South Carolina co continues to be positioned to provide uh, rescue and security uh, measures uh, for the citizens of South Carolina. Uh, we're also working to preserve infrastructure as uh, th time permits. Uh, we will be prepared to support re-entry. We'll be support prepared to respond to needs of isolated areas as, as the storm progresses. Uh, the governor has asked us to uh, uh, have our chaplain uh, visit the shelters, uh, and we, so we have chaplains, volunteer chaplains, uh, local pastors visiting shelters uh, to uh, make sure that uh, uh, shelter needs are being taken care of. Governor? Thank you, General. Secretary Hall, Department of Transportation. Thank you, Governor. Well, as you can see, the <clears throat> storm is still impacting the state, we, and we still have a ways to go, as reported by John Q. earlier. We are seeing trees down in the Dillon, Marion, and Ori areas, and our, our team are working those trees as weather permits. Of course, with the storm approaching and tropical storm force winds in the area, we're trying to make sure that our employees and our team members are safe. So as soon as the tropical storm force winds subside and we're able to get in there, we will start working our way back in. We'll have two main focus areas. Our first focus area, once the storm subsides, is to basically partner with the utility companies, National Guard, first responders, county government, and others to cut our way back into the areas. And we'll do it based on a priority basis. We have pre-identified our priority routes of regaining access back into the area for the first responders and that'll be our interstates major highways and critical infrastructure type facilities so hospitals shelters things along those lines fire departments once we get through what we call the first push or gaining entry back into the area once the st storm subsides our next focus will turn towards planning and pre-positioning ourselves for the flooding that we expect to come to the area we're focusing very closely on the Lumber River, the Little PD, and the Waccamaw, and we're studying all of our bridge crossings and causeways throughout that region. Our main goal is to try to maintain east-west and north-south mobility throughout this area as well as the rest of the state. This is a statewide event, as the governor and others have mentioned, and we are trying to prepare and get assets in place so that we can quickly react to the storm as it progresses. One of the things that we're doing with the team that's here and others is that we are looking at real-time data with regards to the rainfall and making adjustments to our plan as needed based on actual data. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Secretary. Chief Keel, SLID. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, Mark Keel, SLID <coughs> Chief. Uh, we as all of our state law enforcement partners are now tra transitioning into our security missions for our local agencies, SLED, DNR, Triple P, DPS, SCDC, PRT, and SCCJA, along with the National Guard, are fulfilling these requests. These requests range from patrol to controlling traffic control points, uh, enforcing curfews, and security in our shelters. We'll continue to support our, support our local law enforcement partners until uh, we get into the recovery area for the duration of this event. Again, everyone should be aware that law enforcement will be out in force. As the governor has said, we will not allow our citizens to be taken advantage of 
uh, by those who refuse to obey our laws. Again, as I've said, lawlessness will not be tolerated. Thank you, Chief. Director Smith, Department of Public Safety. Thank you, Governor. Leroy Smith, Department of Public Safety. Uh, all lane reversal routes have closed and returned to normal uh, direction for US 501 as well as the I-26 corridor. Uh, we are prepared to assist the Department of Transportation with road closures and diversion routes uh, due to the possible flooding. We also are prepared to assist SLED uh, with law enforcement and security missions. Uh, our response uh, post landfall fall could include, but not limited to, as I just mentioned, uh, road closures, diversion routes, uh, investigating collisions, uh, directing traffic in the intersection where the traffic control devices are gone or inoperable, uh, perimeter security, access points, uh, line patrol and quick clearance of uh, roadways due to uh, disabled vehicles or vehicles involved in collisions and providing escorts uh, for some utility uh, vehicles. Uh, and I know the governor mentioned it earlier, we, we mentioned it yesterday, but I just want to uh, emphasize the importance of uh, the roadway conditions. Uh, they will be uh, dangerous in the impacted area. Therefore, we're asking uh, motorists in those impacted areas to please stay off the roads unless absolutely necessary. Uh, again, don't drive around barricades and don't drive in or through standing water. Beneath the standing water could be down power lines, debris, tree branches, or the roadway could be washed out. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Dr. Meacham, Department of Social Services. Thank you, Governor. I'd like to give an update on the sheltering situation. <clears throat> As of 2 p.m. today, we had 70 total shelters open across the state. 57 of them are general population shelters, and 13 are special medical needs shelters. We have two general population shelters that are full. These are Flower Town Elementary and Dorchester. Goose Creek High School in Berkeley. We have four special medical needs shelters that are full. Currently there are 152 clients in the special uh, medical needs shelters. In our general population shelters, we have a total of 6,433 individuals in the shelters. We have a capacity for 44,648. We are at 14% of that capacity. So that leaves us with 38,224 spaces in our shelter available at this time. I'd like to just make a few comments about food in, in the shelters. Each county has an established feeding plan that is individual to their county that, has, that they have to sustain their operation for 72 hours at any given time. It has been verified that Horry County has a five-day feeding supply in their shelters at this time. Again, the sources of that food vary from county to county. It could be food bank, school cafeterias, Salvation Army kitchens, or food banks. Currently, we are receiving no issues with food and shelters, but if we receive them, we will address them as they come in. And I'd like to make a comment about cots in shelters. Currently, the National Guard is distributing 5,000 cots into shelters across the state, starting at the coast and moving inland. Additional cots have been identified and a distribution plan is being worked on at this time. And as a result of these facts, you see we have over 6,000 people in shelters. Right now, we don't have a one-to-one -one ratio for individuals to cots. So as I go back over what to bring with you to the shelters, please be reminded to bring, bring bedding materials as when you arrive, it may not, you may not have your individual uh, cot upon your arrival. Please remember to bring your blankets, pillows, and comfort items to include bedding. Medicines if you have chronic conditions such as high blood pressure and diabetes, important identification documents, special food items if you have small children or if you are on a restricted diet. And once again, go to your SCEMD.org for a live list of the shelters. Look at the ones with the green paws for pet-friendly shelters. We still have Blenheim Elementary and Middle School in Marlboro, Cane Bay High School in Berkeley, DeVos Middle and Dorchester, 
and Lake Marion High School and Orangeburg that are pet friendly. Thank you, Governor. Thank you very much. <coughs> Director Wilson, Department of Health and Environmental Control. Thank you, Governor. Uh, first, I'd like to note that as part of Team South Carolina, DHEC has deployed over 700 of our employees across the state in preparation for this storm. We've conducted 262 pre-storm assessments of dams across the state. Uh, in addition to that, as the storm continues, we have 27 of those dams that with the help of the Guard will continue to provide surveillance on those dams. 114 health care facilities in the evacuation zones were evacuated. This includes nursing homes and assisted living facilities. Seven hospitals were evacuated and closed in preparation of the storm. We are already working with those hospitals as, that as the storm uh, passes, as weather conditions permit, as road conditions permit, and as the condition of the hospitals permit, to try to get emergency services back in place as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you very much. Director Taylor, Colonel, Department of Natural Resources. Yes, sir. Thank you, Governor. Um, once again today, we know this is going to be a, a large rain event, and we're watching this rain and, and doing models almost hourly so we can predict where the greatest needs may be. We have some real-time information now um, from North Carolina because we've seen that rain, and and our hydrologists are working with hydrologists from DOT to look at that, to map it, to look at roadways and bridges, to see what areas are should be on top of those priority lists. Uh, still, the PD Basin is our area of greatest concern um, because we, you know, the large amount of rainfall that's fallen in North Carolina, which also flows into South Carolina, on top of the rainfall here in South Carolina. So it is our greatest concern. We are, are looking at the Santee River Basin now as well, especially that lower part of the Santee River Basin. Fortunately, that, that area is the least populated of our river basins, but still it looks as if we may have some flood conditions there. We'll continue to walk our way across the state as rain falls and look at all of these river basins and model to attempt to be ahead of the flood conditions as much as possible. Um, I would also remind you again today that you boaters um, remember that boating conditions just like um, highway conditions can be very hazardous. So please stay off the water unless you absolutely have to. And some of these flooded areas where we have subdivisions or hazardous conditions, our officers on the water may restrict you from going in because of the hazardous conditions. So know that ahead of time. We also will be on the water in some vulnerable areas where um, we have homes that may be vacated, and as Chief Keel said, we take looting very seriously. And if we find you there and, and you're trying to take advantage of someone that has um, vacated their home, then, then we will take the appropriate action. Again, we would ask our boaters to be careful on the water. Once again, please don't sightsee. Please don't go out just to look at the flood because your boating activity could cause a lot of damage to someone's home. Um, we stand ready to respond as soon as the rain um, stops and we'll be doing search and rescue missions and security on, on folks' homes in these flooded areas. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Colonel. <coughs> Director Edwards, Nanette Edwards, Officer Rector Staff. Thank you, Governor. Um, first, I'd like to provide an update on the outages. Uh, these are customers without electric service. Uh, for Horry County, it's 48,632. Dillon, 4,464. Marion, 4,408. Florence, 3,946. Total statewide electric outages at this time is 66,924. And this data was pulled at 2 o'clock today. Um, I wanted to follow up on um, comments by Secretary Hall. Uh, ORS has been working with uh, DOT um, and with their support, uh, coordinating with the electric cooperatives and other utilities so that as, as Secretary Hall explained, as they cut in, that the utilities can co go in with them and come in as quickly as they can to work towards restoration of service. But again, it can't be said often enough, please be patient, this storm is slow moving and that will hamper or delay restoration efforts. And they can't send the crews out until it's safe to do so. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. 
Kim Stinson, Emergency Management Division. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, here at the State Emergency Response Team here at the SEAC, uh, our priorities are sheltering and initial response, including flood operations, and then it'll be followed up by initial damage assessment and reentry. Uh, in terms of what's going on down at the uh, county level, we've got right now there's 26 counties that their emergency operations centers are, are operational, and their primary focus continues to be sheltering and initial response. And we're moving some of our uh, EMD liaisons to the PD area uh, because that's where the, uh, the major effort is, is expected to be. Uh, and we're looking, our planning teams uh, collectively are looking at the uh, distinct possibility, especially in the PD where some of those counties uh, internally may become isolated due to the flood water. Uh, we're coordinating with those counties to pre-stage uh, food, water, and fuel in advance of the flood waters. And then we're also developing plans to continue resupply after the flood waters have arrived. Uh, in the world of logistics, we're, uh, we've got 687 requests that we've, have come in here. The 555 are complete or in progress. We've got 13 out-of-state teams uh, on site here in South Carolina from five different uh, states and about 300 personnel. Uh, we've delivered 43 generators to date uh, in various locations, but primarily along the coast and the PD area. Just a reminder that in terms of the, the wind danger that we still have here is uh, staying indoors during the storm and away from the windows and, and glass wind, glass doors, closing the interior doors and securing and bracing external doors, keeping the blinds and windows, uh, or rather blinds and curtains closed, and uh, certainly if the need arises, take refuge in a, a small interior room, closet, or hallway within the house. And uh, be prepared, as is already said, without electricity for an extended period of time. So if you can have a battery-operated radio to stay connected, that's a, that's a great idea. And there's always the possibility of tornadoes as well, as uh, John talked about earlier. Public information. Again, the public information phone system for any questions that you might have, one 866 Two four six zero one three three, but that's not nine one one. Call nine one one if you have an emergency, but call the other number if you have uh, have any questions about what might uh, what might you do or what what you'd like to do. Already mentioned SCEMD.org. It's got plenty of links in there. It'll take you to just about anything that you need to find. And then same with the South Carolina South Carolina Emergency Manager app. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And now we will try to answer your questions. So yes, ma'am. The Waccamaw, the Lumbar, <clears throat> and the Peaty Rivers have been mentioned for possibly historic flooding. Which roadways are y'all concerned about being washed out? And you mentioned isolated counties. What are your preparations to help with that? Ms. Hall. Thank you, Governor. So as uh, Director Taylor mentioned, we are getting real-time data now on the actual rainfalls and updating our models to try to predict and forecast which roadways may be overtopped and which areas we need to focus on. I don't have a definite answer for you on that right this moment, but we are working that hard and making sure that we are, we'll be pre-positioned and make sure that we close any roadways that would, we would be concerned about based on the, the uh, actual data, real uh, rainfall, actual amounts, as well as making sure that we're establishing our priority routes for re-entry. Um, uh, post flood once flood happens so I don't have a definite answer for you yet on exactly which routes obviously each one of those crossings over those rivers we are analyzing those very carefully the elevation of those bridges the elevation of the roadway and the causeways leading up to those bridges comparing that to the rainfall amounts in our and our uh, uh, floodway modeling and then once once we make some determinations from that we will take action appropriately let me just ask specifically, what about 501 and 95? It's too early to, to uh, make any determination on those just yet. We are still running the flood bottles based on real-time rainfall data. Can we talk about specific numbers of assets in place, whether it be swift water rescue teams or personnel to try to stop this water? Is there someone that can answer that question? Ms. Stinson, do you want to tell that? Ms. Falk? Sure. Yes, sir. Um, yes, for search and rescue assets, we have about 750 search and rescuers personnel. They were based here in Columbia, but they're already moving out. We have some in Lake City, Somerville, um, Clarendon, Sumter. They're placed out, ready to respond as soon as the winds die down. Um, so that's 
we've got FEMA teams, teams from our out-of-state um, resources that Director Stinson mentioned, and then, of course, our in-state resources. I know we're just at the beginning of the storm hitting the area, but have there been any conversations about when schools might reopen in South Carolina? I was just going to add to those emergency. Let's add to those. Uh, also adding to the emergency, uh, we have six uh, National Guard uh, helicopters that are equipped to do hoist operations along with uh, there are 10 Coast Guard uh, helicopters that are allocated to both of the Carolinas. And then, of course, we have the uh, helicopter carrier off our coast that we uh, have access to uh, and another uh, at, uh, uh, Air Force uh, para-jumpers. So uh, we're, we're good on the aerial piece, and we have 81 high water vehicles allocated out to the counties uh, to uh, access people that may be stranded. As for schools, we'll make those announcements. Colonel? Um, also, when you're looking at personnel that are available on site now, we currently have well over 200 law enforcement officers that are pre-staged. They're in the areas now. They're pre-positioned. They were there for... Uh, law enforcement missions ahead of time. Now they're there, DNR, SLED, Triple P, and others. We're on site now, um, waiting for a time when the flood comes, already pre positioned in those locations. And it's, it's what do you have uh, uh, people allocated? We probably have six or seven thousand people if you count everyone that can be converted to a rescue asset whether it be a county person, a city person, a state person, somebody that specializes in search and rescue. So it's a, it's a tremendous effort and a lot of available resources out there scattered out through the fire departments and the counties so they're accessible when someone calls, calling 911. Thank you. Question? Governor, you've been talking a lot about uh, <coughs> having discussions federally with President Trump. What are those, have you had a recent conversation with the president? What does that entail? Um, how, how would you respond to his response? I, th I think we've had conversations with almost everybody in Washington. <clears throat> All the agency heads, in, including the, um, Mr. Long, the head, head of the FEMA, as, as early as this morning. And, <clears throat> excuse me, those resources are available. We've been in constant communication, and we've also in communication with the county officials, all the local officials, and everybody involved in this effort to to determine what we need and when we need it, which of course will be uh, very soon, and, and we're making those efforts. Governor, can we get back to my earlier question? Sorry, I understand the storm is still <coughs> incoming, but have there been any conversations about when schools may? Been a lot of conversations about schools, and we'll be making those announcements at a later date. You mentioned you talked to uh, folks in Nichols. What other towns have you reached out to that might flood? Uh, Myrtle Beach, North Myrtle Beach, Charleston, North Charleston, Pauley's Island, Beaufort, uh, and every place in between. We've, uh, we've had conversations with just about everybody on the coast at one time or another. Those include the local officials as well as elected officials, uh, senators, house members, county council, what about more inland, like Sherrard, King Street? Really? We, ha we, we have been having those conversations, but the, we've been uh, concentrating on those on the coast and in the, and in the PD. Secretary yes, Hall, is there a threshold of wind for which the bridges would be closed? Excuse me. Pardon me, sir. Yes, uh, the DOT, along with our uh, local law enforcement partners, we do have certain protocols for what we call high-level bridges. Those are the tall bridges. And uh, we also have protocols for the swing bridges or the movable bridges. And generally, uh, 25 miles per hour or more for the movable bridges, that's when we lock those down uh, to where only vehicular traffic can cross so we don't open them to marine traffic. And then on the high-level bridges, at 30 miles per hour, sustained winds, high-profile vehicles are discouraged from using those high-level bridges. And then at 45 miles per hour, they are strongly discouraged by local law enforcement partners from utilizing those bridges for safety reasons, of course. Thank you. In the Midlands areas, what specific assets are in place to mitigate flooding should it happen there? The, uh, the local officials here uh, in Richland and Lexington, uh, they've been very familiar with the previous events and they're looking at what they need to do in terms of localized evacuations. Uh, 
they've got access to their their own uh, uh, assets that they have which are considerable in the Midlands area and if they need assistance then they'll ask us for it and we can uh, provide assistance from other areas as well we have uh, about half of about the same number of uh, vehicles and personnel that have been activated not activated in reserve at this point uh, and those people could be activated for the Midlands if necessary too. Governor, I saw um, some counties in North Carolina are starting to set curfews for people. Are you planning on doing that at any time for any areas? Um, some of our local jurisdictions have done that. Chief? There's a number of uh, local jurisdictions that have curfews in place now. Horry County, Georgetown, the town of Andrews, Colleton County, Edisto Island Beach, Marion County and Dillon County have got curfews that are in place or either begin this evening at 7 o'clock. Chief, has looting been a problem in the past with these storms? We've been very fortunate. We've had very little of that in the past, and it's been because uh, law enforcement, again, has been out in force, uh, not just on our roadways and our neighborhoods where we can drive, but as, uh, as Director Taylor said, also in our waterways, uh, those folks that live on our rivers, uh, they've had both marine patrol and air patrols in those areas to uh, strongly discourage people from looting. Governor, Another you, question. Governor, you talked about um, <coughs> drones yesterday. Now that Florence has made a landfall, are you guys still using that technology? And what information does that use provide? What, what technology? The drones and technology you talked about yesterday. Oh, there's a lot of modern technology, particularly in communication, that we did not have years before. And, as you can see from everyone here and the communication network that we have across the state as well as uh, w with other states, uh, it's all in full use. Governor, yes. do we have any updated numbers as to how many people in the place have evacuated? Yes. Thank you, Governor. So we've estimated uh, once the uh, reversal was taken off of I-26, looking at uh, uh, full uh, all the reversals and all the other evacuation routes, we've estimated that 441,000 people uh, uh, evacuated. Mr. Stinson, um, you, you said you're pre-staging in case of these isolated counties. So where exactly are you? That's in, yeah, that's in progress right now. They're working particularly three <coughs> counties, uh, uh, Ori, Marion, and Georgetown and taking a look at pre-staging fuel, uh, food, and water and in advance of the uh, the actual floodwaters. So where exactly y'all are still trying uh, yeah, to Yeah, I, I can't tell you that right now. They're, when I left to come in here, they were they were working with the, with the, uh, the counties and then uh, we're also gonna have another meeting here shortly to, to finalize that. And Governor um, Clemson, do you think that there's, the game should go ahead? That's up to them. Have you talked to Clemson folks about it? Not about that. Okay. There's, Any um, more questions? There's notice from the Florence County EM Emergency Management di uh, Division that says that they are actually uh, asking for an evacuation along Black Creek uh, in that county. Do you expect there to be more evacuations of small little streams and rivers in South Carolina? And how do people find out about that? Okay. Yes, yeah, so, um, Black Creek is in Florence County. It's a smaller creek that floods often. Um, so we have a lot of knowledge of that creek and we have personnel now working with Florence County um, to make sure that it, when the evacuation takes place, if any needs that are there, we will provide them, whether it's going in by boat to remove folks or just making sure they get out ahead of time. Right now it's not in flood condition, so the evacuation is very timely. Um, again, we, we have a history across the state, especially these small rivers that can flood or flash flood. So our officers and our local officer, law enforcement officers in the areas are monitoring those. Um, and we're in the process now of some of those that we, where we realize we have these potential problems, we're starting to model them. We just modeled what we knew was the first priority first, and now we're starting to back backfill and look at some of the smaller rivers and creeks. Governor, yesterday uh, Mayor Benjamin said that this won't be a repeat of the 2015 floods. Would you agree with that, or do you think that this is going to be as big Well, I think we are much, as he has mentioned, we're much more prepared this time because we've, we've been through it one time before, and certainly it won't be a repeat in, in that, that regard. 
but as far as the volume of water we don't know we know there's gonna be a lot of rain <clears throat> as we know that the hurricane has already been mentioned is moving slowly just crawling across the state be dropping rain the whole time and is doing the same thing in North Carolina it's about 300 miles wide that's a lot of water to come through South Carolina so we know we're gonna have some flooding and that's why we are urging everyone to remember that after the winds die down we might have a day or so of, of what seems to be uh, peace with a lot of uh, uh, debris uh, down, houses damaged, uh, uh, wires down, and, and trees down, but then we'll, that is likely when the flooding will, will really, uh, we'll see the real flooding. So we got to be very careful this time. For the people living in that PD region, can we talk a little more about what folks there are seeing right now as far as flooding situations? Current? Well, well, currently, none of those major rivers are in, in a flood <coughs> condition at this time. Uh, we're expecting that to happen, but it will probably be days before that happens, maybe, maybe as early as Monday, as those waters out of North Carolina and our local rainfall um, causes those rivers to move into a flood condition. So currently, we have, other than some small areas with some flash flooding, possibly any large-scale flooding has not started. We're still in the Pre, almost in the pre-storm or storm situation now with the wind field going through and we will continue to have heavy rains and and we will have flooding conditions in two to three days. Outside of the river system, any flooding reports or anything like that? We haven't received any through our troughs. No uh, questions? Our focus is obviously on Florence, but there's a few storm systems right behind it. Are you That's guys right. paying attention to those? Yes, ma'am. How, I mean, how much are you guys how far out in advance are you guys planning we, for those? We plan out as far as we can, but right now we, we're focusing on this one because it's uh, the winds and the rain are here, but after that comes the flooding. So we've got plenty to concentrate on. Last question. Are, are there any injuries <coughs> reported or people who've been stranded and need to be rescued so far or anything? No, sir. Mm -hmm. The answer is no. no. Can I, can I ask one more question? Sure. There obviously are thousands of people on the coast who have not evacuated. Are we past the point of evacuation? I mean, should those people now just hunker down and make sure that they have all well, the Well, it is dangerous to drive. <clears throat> if there's water in the streets, it's dangerous. If the wind is blowing, uh, it's dangerous. So the evacuation order stands. All other precautions stand. We're urging everybody to be patient, to be cautious and don't gamble. We do not want to lose a single life in South Carolina this storm. We're working hard. Thank you very much.